Okay, so welcome to um, this um, Facebook Live um, with me, Robin Bates and Alison. And this week we have Janet and Margaret from Mid Antrim Animal Sanctuary um, to have a wee chat with us for the next while. But first, before we do that, we will go to Alison and get an update on Bertie, her puppy. Um, and there he is, looking very cute. So, what age is he now? Um, he's about 16 weeks now. 16, 16 weeks. So, has he been up to anything challenging? What's, he, what's his favourite two things? His favourite two things, unfortunately, are still my slippers and anything with laces. Okay. Yeah, so he had a little attack uh, with a visitor staying who yeah. made the mistake the other night of leaving their hiking boots sitting on the ground. And uh, I came home later on and he had pulled one lace totally out and was in the process of eating the other two. <laughs> well, at least they're eating the uh. <laughs> Yes, that's true. <laughs> but as you can see, he's very hard to hold right? because he's just, he just, he wants to be at everything. He's very, very energetic and um, he's quite, uh, he, he's quite crafty. You know, he's learned how to go with the door flap and around the house. And even if you put him outside to sort of tell him off, he just, manages to work himself back into the house now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so, and how's the toilet training going? Still ongoing. So, it can take up to six months for them to be completely accident-free, but... Uh, and the, the shorter leg dogs are harder to toilet train because it takes them longer to get to the door. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he's quick. He's quick, so it's harder for us to chase after him. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, you don't see the signs as quickly with the, the smaller dogs. Okay, excellent. Good. So he's getting bigger all the time. Yes, he can go out at a fight at home. Is he still on two meals or three meals a day or has he gone down? We, we sort of have him down to two to two meals now. And sometimes at lunchtime, we might give him a few wee biscuity things, but he's sort of down to two quite big meals. He's getting more than the other two now, I'd say, really. Um, yeah. And did he choose that or did you make him? Did you choose that? Uh, we sort of. We sort of noticed, I don't know, I think at the start he sort of was, it was very obvious he was very hungry at lunchtime and he would have come looking for food and now he doesn't really, so. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So they do quite often choose which meals they, they don't really want and lunchtime is one of them actually. Um, usually they have their tea, make them feel safe and comfortable in the evenings and breakfast sort of after their walk on their toileting. So there you go, some puppy advice. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, right, I'm just going to check on Cooper to make sure it's him that's eating and not anybody else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he's eating. Um, I've got this just in case he decides to disturb us. Um, okay, so welcome Janet and Margaret from mid Antrim Animal Sanctuary. Um, Margaret, your role is in charge of animal and animal welfare, is that right? Yes, that's right, welfare manager which I just sort of make sure that the animals get all that they need and sort of the general running of every day um, mm -hmm. that the animal gets. Well, they're, the animals are priority, aren't they? That's um, Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah, they really yeah. are. They come first. Yeah. And Janet, your role is you run the centre? Yes, yeah, so basically everything else outside of the animals, so income generation, uh, health and safety, all the dull things that aren't directly impacted on animals, but of course it takes all of those things to make everything work. So yeah, everything mm -hmm. else then comes under my remit. Excellent. And what size of team have you got? Quite a small team. Uh, we have, actually we're up to 13 staff members now, uh, but a lot of part-time work within that. So we've got 13 mm -hmm number would equate to possibly about eight full-time staff members so it's still a low number of team members we rely very much on our dedicated volunteers uh who complement our work here at the sanctuary so yeah yeah we're kept busy we're kept very busy good excellent excellent so we're here to talk about the animals and how we'll just have we look at how covid has affected things since um well since the day boris shut us all down told us to stay at home 
so I, I know and when that happened there was a large influx of people demanding dogs even some of my friends fell out with me because i couldn't produce dogs out of my cupboards and <laughs> did ask the question what are you going to do when you go back to work and um, so that was just one of those things that got to me um, I just wouldn't give them any help whatsoever so because I knew what was going to happen. Um, so how has it affected things? Did you have more in, less in, or a bigger demand? So we, we aren't, well, when Boris made his statement, we obviously, we acted quite quickly of the following couple of days and we were able to get quite a significant number of dogs and cats rehomed just in that short period of time, those that were in the process. So that left us with a steady number here. Um, so throughout the, the process of lockdowns and opening up and lockdowns again, then we were managing our dog and cat numbers. Uh, we had completely closed to the public. So it was just staff members and volunteers were in. Uh, so we managed that process then. Coming out of COVID then, that gave us an opportunity to look at our internal systems. Uh, and what we had discovered throughout COVID was obviously there was fewer numbers of people at the sanctuary. Our, members of the public who would have been able to do walk-ins and come up and meet the dogs directly uh, initially at the point of rehoming then we sort of noticed that it was a quieter environment it was a calmer environment we were able to set in uh time scales to the day so dogs got walked at certain times there was that expectation from the dogs that they get walked in the morning and then walked in the afternoon we brought in a, a sort of a fairly robust rule market that uh, all our dogs would get two walks a day plus an enrichment activity. So that all fed into us coming to the conclusion uh, that we would be better remaining uh, close to the public in a general sense, in a rehoming sense. And uh, we operated then from an appointment-based system. And that appointment-based system we really had fine-tuned throughout COVID. So we knew it was quite an uh, effective way of rehoming dogs and cats. And we have continued with that then since COVID. Excellent. So in many ways, COVID has made a lot of people, companies, and including myself, reevaluate mm. how they do things and life. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I was on the M2 yesterday and life seems to have got back to normal. <laughs> it took me half an hour to get from Glen Gormley to Belfast. Mm. Um, so, you know, but I do think that's a, a, a that was a great opportunity to work on that and fine tune that. And um, I'm assuming you're going to maintain that appointment-based system as yeah. into the future. Yes, yes, we, we plan to, to keep it in place, really. Yeah, you know, ultimately, when we cut to the chase, everything that we do is for the welfare and well-being of our dogs and cats. So we have found that that is a much better system, as I say. It's a quieter environment. There's not people coming in. There's no expectation that the dogs who are in their kennels there's people coming and looking at them or we're bringing dogs out on occasions, on multiple occasions to meet people. So we can manage our day. We can manage the day of the dogs and the cats and and still encourage rehoming through rescue centres. Yeah, excellent. Which excellent. also gives us, which, sorry, Robin, but which also <laughs> gives us time then to work on the dogs which had come in with problems because mm -hmm. some of our dogs do need a lot more work um and sort of so that get the staff that time as well and it sort of had brought the dogs on quicker mm -hmm. um yeah. and then we were able to find them homes mm -hmm. which sort of was great for the dogs and ourselves mm -hmm. yeah because we as margaret said we also we developed a behavioral mentoring plans so we had we were able to put those in place for the dogs who maybe were that wee bit harder to home uh, and then that's obviously working through slow processes with dogs to try and fine tune any issues that they have and get them to a point where obviously they're they're they may be more acceptable if that's the right word for rehoming. So uh, the guys have that time to do that and they can dedicate the time to it. Uh, mm -hmm. So so you know it's benefiting it's benefiting the dogs in the long term because we find them a home and hopefully then that's their forever home rather than the possibility of being rehomed having to be returned etc multiple times. Okay, excellent, excellent. So you don't want Cooper back then? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you would say, you would have found that sense of failure, Robin. You know that <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, so what about the cats and all this? We talk about dogs a lot because obviously my prime my <laughs> my career is involved with dogs. So what about the cats? Tell me about them. I do have a cat myself. So um, yeah. 
the we have found this has been the most challenging year for the amount of cats and kittens that have come onto our books and um, all the sanctuaries are chocker blocked and um, we have waiting lists and um, i think through COVID, people which have got cats and kittens have not had them spared um, and neutered so we think this is where this is coming from and um, quite a lot of people are saying they can't afford to feed them they can't afford their vet bills so um it's definitely been on the rise the last year definitely mm. and, and and you know part of the thing the vet bills are quite expensive now because um, one of my dogs got a few lumps removed four years ago and i think it was two or three hundred pounds and they were looking for eight this time uh -huh. yeah um, so it is quite shocking um that rise it's kind of it made me think about the fact i have four dogs and a cat and three of the, three of the dogs are quite elderly so this is mm -hmm. you know we may we may have to rethink um the cost of owning a pet yeah. um uh, it's it's something important to let people know before they do even buy a pet or adopt a pet that these things are on the rise and can make you know can make a big dent into you. I don't want to be negative about anything because this is supposed to be a positive program, but um, it is very important to look at take into consideration these things before committing. Um, yes, we would be seeing the impacts of it, Robin, to a degree. You know, we would we support food banks and we would support individuals with pet pet food, dog and cat food, but we are definitely seeing people you know getting in contact and saying you know they just literally cannot afford. To keep their dog or cat and we, we you know our purpose in life is to keep the dogs and cats in homes and in a home environment so we do as much as we can to help people out but i suppose there always is a line in the sand where people just you know, it's just too much for them and yeah yeah well i suppose um, my luxury is i've had no kids so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um have, uh, <clears throat> yes and they've been with me too long for me to do anything about yeah. it yeah. um okay so that's excellent so the new system in place so are the staff happy with the new system is everybody on board with this they they are everybody mm -hmm. um sees the difference it has made to the animals um yeah. because the covid gave them that time mm -hmm. for to see the difference in them um and we actually spoke to other sanctuaries as well which um, have done the same and are not, are doing online as well. So because benefit the animals more, that is what we we have went by and that's yeah. why we're doing it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the important thing because you, you, exactly. you don't want to be bringing a stressed dog home um, because that's that the first two or three days are really difficult. And I have to say, Cooper wasn't the easiest dog when he came into the house, but he came into a three dog household um, and he felt the need to mark his territory in, <laughs> in, on yeah. the pants and the water bowl and um, <laughs> the curtains. So um, it was a challenging couple of days, but we've got through all that. Um, and he is a, he's a gem now, generally. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Except when he eats my hat and. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> A bank card today so yeah. oh, no. but it was, it's raining and he's bored and i don't want to put him outside because it's too wet <laughs> yeah. I've, washed, I've washed too many tiles in the last few days um okay so tell me about the enrichment what does that entail enrichment enrichment is great we push that all the time in our classes we push it all the time in our sales and anything we do so can you describe what that looks like for the dogs so we would try, uh, well, obviously the two walks a day now is mandatory. So that's what we, we will achieve every day. And a, again, a note of thanks to our volunteers. But on top of that, then enrichment activities. So it can vary from, you know, in the afternoon, the dogs will get a Kong, they'll get a slow feeder, they'll get a puzzle. There's also, we have our living room, upstairs living room. So that's for dogs like Bella, who folk can see on the website and wee bits of different posts on Facebook it tells you a wee bit of the backstory to Bella, but Bella remained outside most of her life. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are now slowly integrating her, bringing her up into our, our living room, letting her watch a little bit of television, just learning what indoor life can feel like and be like. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So that is a process that we're working through because obviously the people who rehome from us want their dogs inside as we do. So yeah. uh, so if we can encourage Bella then that that's a good thing, then hopefully that will enhance her, her rehoming opportunities. What else do we do? We're all trained or the staff that work with the dogs are trained for scent training. So we can do little exercises mm -hmm. for that because that's extremely yeah. beneficial for them. Uh, yeah. And yeah, just we have a new television that we uh, we managed to fundraise for. So it's in the barn. So we play, you know, various dog related channels to the dogs. So we have that ongoing and that stays there for the dogs that are in there during the evening. And then they have that on. We play music to them. Uh, and we change that about. So we used to just be purely pl classical music, but we now mix it up to different types of music and even just purely talking channels. Mm -hmm. And as we found for the likes of one of our previous long-term dogs, just a wee drive out in the van can be as exciting as it gets. Yes, uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and they love that. So it's just really finding out what the dog's like and trying to yeah. incorporate as much of it as we can in the, in the day. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, Margaret Sawyer reminded me about our dog's day out where that's once or twice a week where we take all about three of our dogs at, at any one time and we take them to a fun park uh, so they get a chance to do a bit of running about, you know, off lead, on grass, just the things that we can't necessarily provide here at the sanctuary at the moment until we get our field developed. Okay, excellent. That's That sounds amazing um really lots of things do you do training with them you know like walking on loose lead and that sort of thing because that's and an, an, we would class that as enrichment as well um snuffle mats and those sort of yeah, things yeah. all that okay. um shane and sheila would be our two main sort of um long-term staff mm -hmm. so everything that is put um they put into place and then the staff the younger staff who are just learn or whatever follow all that so mm -hmm. then they keep that going every day so that the dog's getting to know you know how to do get used to a muzzle or um you know walking beside John Lee different things mm -hmm. which yeah. benefit the animals yeah. mm -hmm. so we have three little dogs in at the moment Robin who uh we're actually have never you know they've never had a lead on for example so that's now starting that process of learning uh you know getting initially used to a collar and then a lead and then obviously processing that through to to walk on them so yeah that's that's ongoing and just started at the moment so uh we can look forward to working that the, working through that journey and just yeah. coming out the other side ready for rehoming that's amazing i mean that because that puts you know um I know beforehand it was getting them walked, getting them dry, getting them fed. It was like a, <clears throat> having to deal with people walking through the door. I think that sounds like an amazing day for anybody's dog, never mind yeah. the guys that you have. You know, there's so many dog owners who wouldn't do that. Yeah. Um, like Cooper's got his squeaky snake in his thing and somebody's chewing something over there. So you know I, I make sure mine get two walks a day although the second was never as exciting as the first one but you know there's so many dogs in people's homes do not get anywhere near that because of busy lives so i think that's a really good example and maybe a message we should get out to people to to play with their dogs more train with them more yeah. give them things to do you know walking is not mental stimulation sometimes it's just mm -hmm. yeah and especially if they walk around the same block two or three yeah. times a day. Exactly. So I think that's amazing because it's nice to see that your dogs are getting more than our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of, well, a lot of dogs at home, um, basically, because um, everybody has busy lives. And um, and they get the same thing every day. Um, I think a, a, one of my big gripes is people giving their dogs two-hour walks at the weekend because they're home. Um, when they really should just get the same length of walk every day because yeah, I, yeah. It has a, it's like you know not running from Monday to Friday but doing a 10 mile run on a Saturday and Sunday it's not good it's not good for the joints not good for the the bones and not good for their mood on the Monday morning so yeah excellent I'm really I'm really impressed with that so what about the cats do they get much enrichment they do. The cats have uh, water fountains. They mm -hmm. actually have little puzzle feeders as well. Um, okay. They volunteers, they go in, they sit and brush them. 
and um, we had a couple of ladies that used to go in and sit and read to them and mm -hmm. um, they had their music on as well and mm -hmm. um, they get out every day as well and um, along the corridor in the cattery in the cattery kitchen just all them wee things you know mm -hmm. to give them exercise mm -hmm. and um you know get a wee play about with the other cats and um so they get lots of richmond activity as well mm -hmm. yeah excellent and, and we actually it's, it's sort of one of those things that every day is a school day because <clears throat> what we discovered was that our back one of our kennel runs the, the dogs who were outside in the outside runs were actually looking across at the cats and because the cats have sort of more of a free run or some of them get the opportunity of a free run around the capri they were able to sit in windowsills looking across at the dogs and mm -hmm. um, so we sort of looked at that and considered maybe that that wasn't the best idea uh, so thanks to sandra and our, our sort of building skills we now have nice planters around so we're blocking their view because that might not necessarily have been a positive thing for either the dog or the cat so we've yeah. now sort of blocked their view a bit but Okay. Yeah. But in real life, other people's cats will sit and look in your window and wind your dog up anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what we were trying to avoid. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's one of those things that happens in the world and I hear it every day. Um, okay, excellent. That's really, really good. So is there anything you would like to highlight, any help from the public or anything you want the public to know about or share with the public or ask them to do or not to do? I think um, the first thing is that they are wanting a dog is to really, really think about have they the time to put into it um, or a cat actually, um, you know, are they going to get be able to give it the time that it needs and mm -hmm. um, quite a lot of people got dogs in lockdown and because they were at home all the time, that was great. Um, then oh, everybody had to go back to work. The dogs started to struggle and um, started to tear up things in the house, started to scratch the doors, bark all day. Um, so all these things, um, then the people had to give their dogs up because they couldn't cope anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they need to think seriously, you know, are they and have they got time for a dog? or a cat yeah and that's any breed you know i know some breeds are more challenging and need more than others especially I'm the working working. dogs and the bigger dogs but you know all dogs need similar things they need their physical they need their mental they need that balance and they also need large periods of uninterrupted sleep um because well like ourselves we don't get enough sleep or enough proper quality sleep we do um tend to struggle a little bit so i think that's part of the reason why i well not the reason why i go out i would leave my dogs on purpose just to give them that period of quality sleep on their own so yeah. they're not watching me all the time so that's one thing that they, a lot of people forget about so um any other things you'd like to think about or let people think about well that's uh, i think um the size of the dog um mm -hmm. if you live in a flat you know can you cope with a big dog um if you'd be better with the smaller dog um if you're five or six floors up and the dog you know has to get house trained and whatever you know are you going to have the time to keep taking the dog down the stairs and up the stairs you know as many times as it needs to mm -hmm. um and the other thing, unfortunately, the other thing is a lot of people are getting elderly parents, young dogs. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> uh, yes. And it's so sad because the people can't cope. Mm -hmm. Now, there's so many older dogs out there that need homes. So I see, think people need to understand if they their elderly parents or whatever have their wee animals passed away and they need another one yes look for another one but make sure it's a bit older yeah yeah i mean the reality is um you know <laughs> we're all going to die but sometimes you know 
Look, my dad there's 87 next month and he's got Kenny that came from yourselves mm -hmm. is 12 or 13. So the reality is one of them is going to go first, but um, they would probably be at a similar stage in life. So yeah, <laughs> well, not, I'm not wishing either of them any, uh, any, yeah. any, any mishaps, but you know, it, it is the reality of life. At least they keep each other company. Yeah. Got a nice warm home, gets walked twice a day. My dad's got company in the evenings, which is what he needs. And exactly. But he couldn't have dealt with a pup. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. Or he couldn't have even have dealt with a three-year-old Labrador. Yeah. yeah. Been way too much for him. Um, and I'd have ended up walking it. So, <laughs> so there you go. Um, um, so is there anything you guys need from us? Do you need contributions? Do you need tiles for days like today? Do you need more toys? I know you've got an Amazon wish list. Is there anything yeah. on that we should know about? Yeah, so we have the Amazon wish list and we have um, occasionally we have stories that going on our Facebook page, which, you know, of dogs or cats, maybe who need that extra wee bit of, you know, medical help, veterinary assistance. So we'll put, you know, we will put our stories and our donate button up there. So if anybody wants to donate to those, uh, they can. Uh, I suppose talk, you, we started talking about our, our new online system. So we're asking people if, you know, fill in the applications only if you're genuinely interested and you fit the criteria. And when we ask folk to, we make appointments for people, you know, and maybe you can't make it because we know life takes over at times, just give us a shout uh, because there, there's a wee bit of time wasted at our end and for people, uh, you know, with appointments being made and then people not just not turning up. So if you're genuinely interested and you fit the criteria, please absolutely apply. That's what we want uh but again if we make it if your appointments are made just you know keep in touch with us basically uh mm -hmm. and we'll do the same mm -hmm. yeah so, it's really it's very important to keep appointments because it, do, it, it does waste a lot of people's time it does yeah. and it slows yeah. the process down and that slows the process down for the dog and the cat yeah. uh so you know a, a day wasted is another day in kennels or yeah. another day in the cadre so that's yeah. ultimately so. what we're trying to avoid uh, mm -hmm. But we understand as well that, as I say, life takes over for people and yeah. things happen. But as I say, if we can just keep in touch and keep that, keep the process moving, that would mm -hmm. be great. Yes. Yeah. And I think, Robin, as well, towels are always important. Mm -hmm. We're always, always looking towels and um, blankets now. And um, we find it much harder getting them dried. And mm -hmm. um, our electric bill's gone up so much. And um, we have the underground heating on now in the evening times for the dogs in the kennels. Um, it's on at nights for the cats as well in the cattery. Um, so everything's getting so expensive. Um, poo bags, we're always looking for poo bags. Very important. Um, Are you sure you don't want them back? <laughs> <Kettle. laughs> um, but as Janet says, you know, our wish list um is there and um we're always adding wee things onto it mm -hmm. um sure we are but um you know just people have been very very good exactly. to us now yeah, yeah. and we can't thank thank them enough but um do you keep the towels and the blankets and all coming because we well, have a box of leads and harnesses for you don't need it yep. The pets at the Highland donated that. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. By care. I forgot about it. I'll get it up. Uh -huh. Thank Fantastic! You. Thank you. And I suppose we we can't not mention our great volunteers who obviously exactly. we've, we've said before. You know, we if you've got us. a few few hours in the week and mm -hmm. you don't mind walking potentially in the day like today, or lifting the odd poo or whatever, we would love to see you just coming up and volunteering with us. Um, yeah. Obviously, there's an induction process and all of that, but. I think everybody who comes up here really enjoys their time with the sanctuary and they really you get a sense of you know of achievement plus great people and we all get on really well so it's a good thing to do if you have the time yeah and how would we find out about the induct induction days are they specific days specific days yep yeah, and they're advertised on our website so we have the next one we're having on saturday the 5th of november uh, and all we all we ask is people to book in yeah. Um, to provide proof of tetanus, obviously. So, yeah. And, and obviously, more importantly, enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's only two or three weeks away. So strike while the iron's hot. Get your name down there and get um, yeah. get volunteering because it's it's much a much needed service. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you can't afford a dog or you can't get a dog because you're in rented accommodation, it's a great way to yeah. engage with dogs and get used to dogs and even learn about dogs. If it, exactly. One of our staff here, Robin, before um, she started was always a cat person. Mm -hmm. She never had dogs. And now she is up there in her doggy knowledge <laughs> um, and did really, really well, you know. So Absolutely. there is a lot to learn and mm -hmm. you can achieve a lot, you know. Yeah, there's nothing beats experience because in my line of work, it's exactly. experience that's got me where I am and that yeah. learning. And if you can't solve a problem, find a way of solving a problem. If you learn about body language, you learn about dogs' moods and, and you know, that's it's a great way to learn about dogs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And every day is a learning day. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Even for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you never First stop all. learning, you, you never stop learning. Exactly. I know, I know. Okay, well, I think that comes to the conclusion. So, um, any last comments? So, I know you 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 would like some blankets and and tiles, and there's a wish list. And Volunteer Day is the fifth of November. Mm -hmm. You can book online, I presume, for that. Mm -hmm. So any we, last takeaway points? Well, we do have um, our dogs, which are on online. Um, mm -hmm. We have some beautiful dogs there, which have been with us now for um, quite a while. Um, they're not long-term dogs, but they're just dogs that need more, a wee bit on, of understanding, which need, needs home. So even the people out there, if they think they can genuinely give um, a dog a home, and um, if they go on even and have a look at Sparky or Lincoln, Lincoln Bo or, or Bella, Bo or Bella yeah. you know, these dogs have mm. so much love to give, but they do need a very special understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Well, I take my hat off to you on all the great work that you do. I am aware of quite a lot of it, um, and I, it's it's an amazing job, and it's it's um, tremendous. So, um, oh, Alison's put up a link to um, Volunteer Induction Day, um, so you can click on that link on your screens if and get straight through. So, thank you very much, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to chat to me. Thank um, you. No problem, and I think Alison may be somewhere to um, finish us off um, no oh, yes i'll finish all right yes i'm thank here you. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you okay so were you happy with that do you think that went okay